What we decide to do in this Congress this year will shape whether or not the digital asset ecosystem has the opportunity to thrive here in the United States. But right now, there's not a workable framework in place for digital asset issuers and intermediaries to be regulated effectively by the SEC or the CFTC. I've heard a few members in this room say that the status quo of existing laws is enough, that crypto firms are just willfully avoiding compliance with the law, and that Republicans somehow are off embarking on a partisan pursuit of sweeping digital asset legislation. But the reason I know that, that this can't be a partisan exercise is because my Democratic colleagues have been telling me they support common sense legislation for months. For example, just last November, our ranking member of House Financial Services Committee, Mrs. Waters said, we need legislative action to ensure that digital asset entities cannot operate in the shadows outside of robust federal oversight and clear rules of the road. Ranking Member Waters went on to say, it's clear that there are major consequences when cryptocurrency entities operate without robust federal oversight and protections for customers. And my friend, a good friend from Massachusetts, the ranking member of our subcommittee, Mr. Lynch, said, while FTX may be headquartered offshore, the circumstances surrounding its collapse strongly point to the need for developing thoughtful regulation to protect U.S. investors. That's a great point. And since we can't trust offshore crypto exchanges like we saw through the FTX collapse, we want to work on legislation here in the United States for U.S. companies that will follow the rules, protect U.S. investors and consumers, and prevent future chaotic things like FTX from happening again. However, if we fail to provide a functional framework for digital assets in this country, all we're doing is forcing this activity to happen in an offshore exchange, rather than in a nicely innovative, properly regulated U.S. working environment. And that will only hurt U.S. investors, innovators, and consumers.